YouTube, welcome back to another video. Thought today's video would be around Luton's success from the conference to the Premier League and how they've done it and how remarkable it actually is with some of the facts and figures we've got. We've got 10 to 12 players that I'm going to be laming today that have all played in the conference Premier or below within the last 10 years and have currently got a Premier League cap for Luton Town and have now gone on to make sure that Luton are out of the relegation zone. There's plenty more facts and figures around it and actually how astonishing it is we talk about how the premier league is the biggest division watched in the world how the best teams we've also got the most money going through we've got teams that are sitting on 10 million revenue in the championship coming to the premier league 200 million the teams that come up like the nottingham forest who rebuild their whole squad from uh, the championship to the premier league spending up to reports of 200 million buying in 30 plus players We've got Sheffield United and Burnley who have come up this year with us who have spent in the region of 70 to 100 million to try and improve their players. Luton have come up into the Premier League. Adapted a few players but kept the core. We've also additional uh, units like Ross Barkley, Andros Townsend and players of that calibre that have come in to obviously help. However, it's the core players that we've managed to keep and develop throughout the years that I want to talk about today. Now, out of our 29-man squad, 12 players that I'm listing below, five defenders have currently played in the Conference Premier or below within the last 10 years. Gabe Osho was out on loan at Yeovil Town in the Conference Tier 5 in 2020, four years ago. And he's now one of Luton's strongest and most consistent defenders. We've got Amari Bell, who's probably my favourite, one of the most consistent defenders out of the lot. Every week, he goes unnoticed every single time. He goes forward, he bombs forward, he's brilliant on the ball. And I must admit, I think he's one of the most consistent defenders that we've got throughout the time that we've had him. I think we got him back in 2021. 2014, on loan at Kidderminster. He actually scored the opening goal against Cambridge United, which sealed a 2-0 victory that made Luton win the Premier Conference Premier title. Alfie Doherty. I have to sort of uh, say this one. Everyone keeps saying each week, Doherty, Doherty, apologies if I get it wrong. I always say Doherty, but I believe it might be Doherty. So apologies, Alfie, if he ever watches. I doubt he will. But he was on loan at Bromley FC in the conference, fifth tier in 2019, five years ago. Incredible. He has been one of our best players coming in from Stoke. He's been fantastic. I don't believe the Stoke fans were very happy on him leaving, but we've managed to get him and picked him up, and he's been phenomenal. Last year was fantastic. This year, he's just as good and obviously he's kept Ryan Giles out of his position. Another player, Ryan Giles, who in 2018, AFC Telford in the National League North, sixth tier. Rob Edwards was his manager at the time, 2018. That was incredible. Um, but we obviously picked him up this year. And unfortunately, we've sent him back out on loan because he's not been able to get a game. Alfie's been too good. Absolutely fantastic. I really do feel sorry for Ryan because... You know, he's one of them players that he looked quality in the opening few uh, pre-season games away, Germany and also Wolves. Delivery, brilliant. Last year, brilliant for Middlesbrough. But this year, just hasn't been able to get a game. Tom Lockyer, the main man himself, club captain. Been fantastic. Absolute rock until, unfortunately, he had his medical issues. But, you know, Wembley, unfortunate again. Um, last year was fantastic. Scored the goal at Sunderland to make sure at home obviously get us going and you know what a player he is i really do hope that we can get back in the squad at some point once his health is fit and running even if not you know get him in on the sidelines and make sure he is that person that is pushing the team forward every single week because he is um instrumental to us 2015 he was with bristol rovers he went down into the conference one season straight back up into league two so another player to tick off on our list of being in the conference in the last 10 years. That concludes the defenders list for Luton Town. And as you can see, I pretty much named, apart from Lockyer and Giles, three consistent starting back three for Luton Town, all played within the last 10 years in the conference. We've got Gabe Osho, free transfer. Amari Bell, free transfer. Alfie come from Stoke. But I'd imagine it would be a low fee, but a high sell-on clause. Ryan Giles, rumoured 5 million which is our biggest ever spending, then Tom Lockyer, free transfer. You know, we have to hats off to the recruitment team for the free transfers, picking them up and making them into what they are today, the training and the squad behind it. 
We move into the midfield. We've got three midfielders. We've got Jordan Clark. We've always said Jordan Clark is our best free transfer we've ever had at the club until Ross Barkley walks through the door. But in 2014, it was on loan at Hyde United and National League North. Again, sixth tier. Incredible. Free transfer. Luke Berry, 2014. He was absolutely phenomenal at Cambridge United who were obviously come up with Luton Town in the same year. Again, an undisclosed fee, but back in League Two, I would imagine that it couldn't have been a great deal. But again, you know, he was brilliant at Cambridge. We took him from Cambridge into Luton, and he's been here ever since. Another one with a cap in, I think he's got five caps maybe, or appearances in the Premier League, and I can't wait for hopefully to get him his goal. Heli Ruddock Mpanzu, the main man himself, come in from Luton, um, all the way from the conference to the Premier League, the record breaker, and everything like that with one club. He has been fantastic. And in fairness to Pelly, he's not only fantastic on the field, he's also one of these people that is crucial on the change room and stuff like that. There's, he gets on with everyone. It looks like he literally drives the team forward and everyone relies on him to bring up the band or whatever. Fantastic player. We picked Pelly up from West Ham and I believe it was a quite a low fee. It had been in the conference, so maybe 50,000, something like that. And he's been with us ever since. Fantastic. He's literally brought the roots up and uh, I think he's one of them players that we kind of need because all these new players that are coming in, he's able to humble them and say, look, this is what Luton Town is. This is what it used to be like. I saw him come out the other day and said our training ground literally was two porter cabins stuck together in the middle of a field. You know, that shows he's got that type of memory and history to say this is where we was and this is where we are now. No one's ever bigger than the club, which is fantastic. Pelly, absolute brilliant player. And every year people say, oh, I don't know if he's good enough for the next division up, etc. Proves himself every year that he comes in. He's always got an error in him, but every player does at the end of the day. But he's brilliant. He's fantastic. Next up on the list, Elijah Adebayo, our top goal scorer in the Premier League. He has been on loan at Bognor Regis in the National League North in 2017. Tier 6 of the English Football League. Again, rumoured to be around 250,000. We brought him from Walsall for, and he was, you know, proving himself scoring goals in League Two. Brought him into the Championship and thought, oh, is he going to provide goals here? Sure enough, got off on the running. And then again, in the Premier League, he had a, an absolute crazy stat where every time he shot, he scored. His stats have been phenomenal, and his link up play with Colton has been fantastic. He scored a hat trick as well. Luton's first ever hat trick in the Premier League. And it was fantastic in that 4-0 victory to Brighton. Next on the list, Jacob Brown, another player on loan at Chesterfield in the conference in 2018. Rumoured to get him from Stoke for 2.9 million. Fantastic player at the top. Scored a goal as well in the Premier League. He's been brilliant. He's been kept out the side the last few weeks. A little bit of injury here and there as well, I believe. But, you know, he's one of them players who can bring on pace. He's got everything about him. Runs down the wing. Able to provide a cross and stuff like that. And, you know, he's a real good, at the moment, backup player to the Colton Morris, to the Adebayos that we actually have at the moment, Jordan Clark, in fact, and Andros Townsend. So a real decent player that's coming through nicely. Cooley Woodrow. Now, I've added Cooley Woodrow onto the list because although he hasn't featured and played in an actual conference team, but in 2011, he came out of Luton Towns Academy straight into our uh, team. He never featured in the conference, but he was in the squad. Obviously, he then went out to other clubs. We got him back for an undisclosed fee, maybe around the 1 million from Barnsley reportedly, but someone that has obviously been at the bottom, come up to the top, and that was in 2011. So obviously a little bit over the 10 years, but I thought I'd just mention it and proven himself. Got also the goal in the FA Cup against Everton to make us go through to the next round. So got to give him the credit that he is due. Now, with the exception of Corley Woodrow, I've just named 10 players there that feature in our squad every single week that have also got a Premier League cap and played in the conference within the last 10 years. Now, what's even bigger fact than that, five of them players have all scored a goal in the Premier League, totaling 15 goals, which is seven less than Sheffield United have scored total goals this season as a squad. Um, however, there is one other player that I have not mentioned yet, who is in our Luton Town Premier League squad every week, James Shea, who is our substitute goalkeeper or third choice goalkeeper, I should say. He got the Golden Glove in League One. He's also featured in 2014 for Harrow Borough FC in the Ismian Premier. He is 7 and 8 and he is in the Premier League sitting on the bench for Luton Town. Incredible. Again, free transfer. We got him 
on a free transfer. James Shea has been phenomenal throughout League One and below. And obviously has just been sidelined for the remainder. He was in the cut runs and stuff like that. But since then, Kaminsky's obviously come in and Tim Krull and has taken that spot for now. But he's fantastic to have on the bench. Two, obviously, again, humble players from where they've come from. Now, putting all them 12 players together into one big batch, the combined cost is an estimated rumour around the £9 million mark. £9 million, 12 players. That is half of what Sheffield United paid for Gusto Hamer, which is incredible stat once again for Luton. Just shows the incredible amount of recruitment that has been done by Luton. And getting these players from where they were to where they are now is humbling and as fantastic and really does show the credibility that Luton deserve. Luton spent around 20 million there or take this season to be in the Premier League. They're out of the relegation zone. They've beaten the likes of Brighton, Everton, Newcastle. They've drawn, they've gone up against Arsenal. They've drawn against Liverpool as well. They've narrowly lost to Man City. Been fantastic from Luton Town, beating Crystal Palace as well. You know, it just shows what a fantastic job Rob Edwards and the team have done in order to keep themselves in the Premier League and fighting to make sure they stay for next year. If they manage to do it and stay up on the current budget that they've done, which I believe now after the January transfer window has gone up to around the 25 million that they've spent, would be incredible considering the teams that have come up around us have spent almost up to 70 to 100 million. Luton deserve that chance to prove that it isn't all about making money and spending money to bring in the best players. It's about having that core people and core team working together, showing where they've come from and what they deserve and going out every single week fighting for that chance to win the Premier League. Now, if you did like today's video, please do smash that like, that sub, and let us know in the comments your thoughts. And if you want to see any more of these types of videos, it was something different, a bit of a laugh, and a bit obviously factual in there as well. And thank you very much for watching. I will see you on Sunday at Manchester United at home.